Hello, grade 11 students. Uh, just, I wanted to give you a few additional tips and information regarding the literacy test, which will be beginning on Monday. You should by now know where you will be writing. So if you don't, check your uh, grade 11 LMS and or ask your teacher. They will have the information as well. You can also ask one of us. Um, the most important tip is to prepare. Take a look at the LMS. There, it's available to every student in the school. There is an OSSLT practice site. There are tips, there are activities, and most importantly, there is a practice test that is modeled exactly on the format that you will be seeing next week. So take a look at that, familiarize yourself with the tools. It will help you feel a little more comfortable when you actually go to, to start the test. Another thing that I, I really, another important reminder, please make sure you bring your OEN number. Your OEN number identifies you as a unique uh, student in the province of Ontario. It stands for Ontario Education Number. And you need that in order to log into your test. So you're not logging in with your name, you're logging in with your OEN number. And you will need that. So it will save time if you have that number with you. Take a screenshot of it, or it's better to even write it on a piece of paper because your phones will not be allowed. So. Um, Please make sure you bring it with you. It's on your MyPath. You will see it on your MyPath. It is OEN number. Teachers will have it with them, but it makes the process much more efficient if you have it with you. So you can just log in and start and not have to wait for someone to give you your OEN number. Some additional tips for actually writing the test. Answer all the questions. Don't leave anything blank. Make an educated guess if you need to, so that way you get as many marks as you can. Okay, use the flag tool to go back to a question that you did not understand. Every year there are students who could have passed, they just failed by just a tiny little bit, and if you would have answered every single question, maybe you would have passed. So increase your chances, make an educated guess if you need to. For short answer questions, there's, there are only two of them, but um, there's often more, more than one part to the question. So make sure you are answering the whole question to get full marks. For example, if the, the question will often state, explain your answer using information from the selection and your own ideas. So your answer should include information from the actual story or dialogue or article, and it should have your own ideas as well. That way, um, if you give proof from the story, you can say something like, um, in paragraph five, it states, etc., etc." That will ensure that you get full marks for that question. For the opinion piece, that is the long writing section. Stick to one side of the issue. So if the question asks, should students get a part-time job, stick to one side. Either answer yes or no, not both. Okay? Either agree or disagree with the statement and provide proof and reasons. We suggest that you do an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion. The three body paragraphs should be about your three reasons. So for example, if the question was, should students have a part-time job? Pick a side, either yes or no. And I've given an example here. Yes, students should have a part-time job because it helps them earn extra money, learn people's skills, and learn how to balance their time. Okay, so there are three different reasons. You write a paragraph about each reasons with proof and examples, and then provide a conclusion. The um, OSSLT uh, LMS, has a lot of examples. It even has examples about um, opinion pieces that got lower marks and opinion pieces that got high marks. So take a look at those examples to give you an idea of what you should be writing for the opinion piece. Make sure you organize your time. Use your rough notes. Uh, there's a rough notes section on the actual test and the teacher will also be able to provide you with actual paper if you prefer to jot notes down on paper you can bring a pencil or pen and you can use that for rough notes as well for the reading selections or the reading sections read the questions first before you answer before you actually read the article or dialogue etc that way you kind of know what you're looking for when you are reading and it's a proven method to increase comprehension and thereby increase the chances of getting correct answers on the multiple choice questions. When, and use the split screen fu function. There's a split screen function that will put the article on one side and the questions on the other. So that's probably the best way to complete those sections. 
um, what else? Y write using complete sentences and don't forget to double check your grammar and punctuation. And for the long writing piece, so the opinion piece, don't skip lines but indent your paragraphs so that the person who's marking knows exactly when your paragraphs start and end. You can just, I don't know if you'll be able to tab, but you can press five spaces to make sure that paragraph is indented. The audience for the writing pieces is always an adult, so make sure your writing is pretty formal and avoid using slang or abbre abbreviations. Don't write as if you are texting your friends. That being said, don't try to impress us by using unfamiliar words and sentence structure. Keep it formal, but keep it simple. Uh, a couple questions that students have asked. What is going to happen if you are absent? Well, if you are absent, you will get a zero. We do not want that to happen. Please make every effort to be there on your assigned day. It, we, we may not be able to guarantee that we can accommodate you. We may be able to accommodate you if you are absent, but maybe not. It is in your best interest to, uh, to write the test on the day you were scheduled, please. Uh, another student has asked, what is the passing mark? What do I need to get in order to pass the literacy test? Well, remember, the provincial standard is in the 70s. So you will need to get a mark that is a level three or in the 70s. So previously the test was out of a score of 400. That does not mean that there are 400 questions, it's just the way it was scored. So you would need a 300 out of 400 to pass, which is about a 75%. Okay, so it's probably going to be about the same. And a couple of final reminders. If you are finished early, you do not have access to your phones, you will be asked to turn your phones completely off throughout the whole test. So you might want to bring a book, uh, put your head down and take a rest, do your work from another course. This is a great time to catch up on your schoolwork. So uh, please make sure you keep that in mind. If there's a technical issue, so some people are wondering, what am I gonna do if the, if the computer doesn't work or if my, if my questions, it's not taking my questions or my answers, it's not letting me write. If there's a technical issue, please don't panic. There are a lot of safeguards in effect. So uh, there's a bunch of people that have been trained. There is IT staff from the school board that is going to be there that day. And if worse comes to worse, we can call EQAO and reset things. You will never ever be penalized because you had a technical issue. Okay, so we wanted to assure you of that. And I'm going to remind you again, this material is based on the grade nine curriculum and you are in grade 11. So I hope that makes you feel a little bit better. We are confident that you will be prepared for this test, okay? If you have any additional questions, please come and see us. Uh, you can see me in Student Success, you can drop in, you can see your resource teacher, your ELL uh, Student Success teacher. There are lots of us here that are here to support you. So please let us know if you have any questions, prepare over the weekend, and good luck on the test. Thank you.